What is going on guys? It's Drama back at it again with the final episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the top 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of this season. This week's episode is somewhat bittersweet because again, it is probably our final episode of the year, which was absolutely crazy. This was an awesome year. But before we get to the 10 best sneakers of the season, I wanna know what you guys think was the sneaker of the year. So go ahead, drop a comment. When you look back at this season, what was the quintessential sneaker of the year? I actually think there is a clear winner. But to what that sneaker is, you're gonna have to wait and find out. But no more waiting. The final episode of NBA Kick starts right now. Get your popcorn ready. Starting off the list at number 10, we got LaMelo Ball with the Puma MB03. I know, I know, I know. I can already hear some of your guys' reactions. Brother, ugh. What's that? I know that the MB03s are not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I do have to make this list with everybody in mind. And for the younger fans out there, or for someone who just loved Dexter's Laboratory growing up, these were unquestionably a top 10 sneaker of the year. For me personally, I appreciated Puma for this collab because I was a huge fan of Dexter's Laboratory growing up. And I feel that it's one of those shows that don't get the credit it deserves. So it's really cool to see it get some appreciation, even though the end product is pretty wild and crazy. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that they're going to be too wild for most with their psychedelic patterns and full spectrum of colors. But once again, I'm going to defend this colorway because I actually dig the look and it fits in perfectly with the silhouette's young and expressive identity. I know not everyone's going to agree with me on this pick. In fact, some of you guys might actually hate this pick. But remember, I'm trying to make this list with everyone in mind. And when I sat back and thought about the 10 most memorable sneakers of the season, these weren't the first thing that I thought of, but they were definitely one of the 10 first things that I thought of. Next up at number nine, we have Tyrese Halliburton with the Nike Zoom Kobe 8 Pro Tro. This season, the NBA had their inaugural in-season tournament, which I personally think was a huge success. And I think it would be tough not to think about the IST when you're thinking about the 2023-24 season in general. So with that, I kind of had to add a shoe inspired by it. Tyrese Halliburton uses the Halo Kobe 8s as a canvas for this custom, which sports a diamond pattern on the upper, alongside some metallic gold hits, which is a perfect fit for where the IST was held, Las Vegas. I mean, really, the entire package here is totally complete. You got the in-season tournament in Sin City. This shoe is perfect for the occasion. And also, it just feels right that we have a pair of Kobe's on this end of the year list because they are hands down the most popular sneaker in the league, and it's not even close. Coming in at number eight, we have Rui Hachimura with the Air Jordan 38. Jordan Brand and Rui Hachimura have been giving us incredible player exclusive colorways for quite some time now. And this year, they use a tried and true formula because I think they know I'm a complete sucker for this kind of colorway. Now, yes, I know what you're thinking. We've seen this type of colorway on other Air Jordan silhouettes before. However, I don't think I'll ever get tired of seeing that traditional cherry blossom Japanese artwork on a sneaker. To make things better, the player who's wearing this colorway is from Japan, so not only is this colorway beautiful on its own, but it also represents the culture of the player wearing it, which make it special in a very unique way, and shows that these brands do care about their players enough to give them special edition colorways inspired by their heritage. This is just one of those sneakers that I would love to have in my collection, and I would probably keep them dead stock, so if that's not enough to earn a spot on this list, I don't know what is. Next up at number seven is Robin Lopez with the Nike Air Zoom GT Hustle 2. Robin Lopez only played 16 games this season, but in those 16 games, he successfully took the belt as the best shoe customizer in the game, player 
or not. While there were a handful of custom colorways to choose from, including a Simpsons inspired one, which might be Robin's cleanest custom, as well as a Yo Yanni Dunktastic colorway, which is probably his most fun custom, I'm choosing Robin's Lucky Dimes custom thanks to its overall package. Not only does this custom feature exquisite artwork, again, done by Robin himself, but Robin also includes two hang tags here, which help elevate this custom above his rest. It still blows my mind how good of an artist Robin is, especially on such a tough canvas. And when I thought about the most iconic sneakers of the season, Robin's customs were one of the first things that pop into my mind. So if this is truly the end of Robin's career as an NBA player, what can I say? The man went out in style. Next up at number six is James Harden with the Harden Volume 8 from Adidas. So I got the Harden 8s on this list for two main reasons. A, they were by far one of the most unique silhouettes of the season. And B, Harden showed some showmanship with this particular colorway. Whether you like them or not, there is no denying that the Harden 8s have a real visual identity. And that's something that Adidas has done particularly well this season. What I mean by that is, you can really see how different the Harden 8s are from every other sneaker on the floor. Whether you're in the arena or just watching on TV, the Harden 8s from a distance have visual identity. And that to me is what truly makes them one of the standout silhouettes of the year. And I'd be remiss if I didn't add them to this end of the year list. Now there were a few colorways that I could have chose from and I almost chose Jalen Williams' Thunder PE, but I went for this black, pink, and blue colorway because of the creativity that Harden showed when he debuted these. Inspired by Harden's wine brand, J Harden Wines, these were unveiled as Harden arrived to the game with a special case holding both his kicks and bottle of wine, which of course had the same exact color schemes. If you remember, Luca did something similar with the debut of his third signature silhouette, but instead of a wine case, he did it with a whole Camaro. And while I did want to add them to this list, I'm going to give the slight edge to the Harden 8s here because they were just too unique visually and were definitely one of the standout silhouettes of the season. Next up at number five, we have Trey Young with the Adidas Trey Young 3. Now here's another sneaker that was not only great visually, but also perfect for the occasion. Early in the year, the NBA held a game in Mexico City to which Trey rocked this incredible custom colorway of his third signature model, which uses a vibrant graphic on the upper and traditional Mexican artwork, which was sure to please Mexican fans in the arena, but just as a standalone shoe itself, this colorway is absolutely fantastic. Everything from the colors to the artwork is just spot on here. And honestly, these don't even look like a custom. They look more like an official colorway, which is actually the highest compliment that you could give a custom sneaker. So overall, this is more than a well-deserved spot on this year's list. But the next pick might be controversial. Coming in at number four, we have Devin Booker with the Nike Book One. So the release for the book one was about as smooth as the Phoenix Suns' season, which wasn't smooth at all. When the sneaker community got their first look at Devin Booker's debut signature model with the swoosh, the reactions were mixed at best. And to add insult to injury, the release of the book one was sloppy at best, to which Booker himself seemed to agree with. Now, despite a bumpy start, I actually grew to love the book ones, mainly due to their appreciation for retro models, which was not only shown in their overall design, but with their colorways as well. I picked the Shattered Backboard inspired colorway as my personal favorite because the book one essentially looks like a pair of Jordan 1 lows. And to me, the Jordan 1 is the best sneaker of all time. So by osmosis, the book one is more than fine in my book. And this colorway in particular gave me a heavy dose of nostalgia, which doesn't hurt as well. I've actually reached a point where I don't get the hate on the book ones. I mean, they pretty much look like a pair of forces or Jordan ones, two of the most iconic sneakers of all time. So if you hate the book ones, I actually think you just kind of hate old looking sneakers, which I don't. I love old sneakers. So I'm actually willing to admit that I was wrong about the book one. Next up at number three is Jeff Green with the Air Jordan 17. All right, this is gonna be a true test of how long you've been watching the show. 
who remembers Jeff Green's insane start to the season? Early in the season, Uncle Jeff unveiled a never before seen colorway of the Air Jordan 11s, which blew all of our minds. But to follow those up, Uncle Jeff outdid himself with yet another never before seen colorway, this time of the Air Jordan 17. To debut two colorways of beloved silhouettes that we've never seen before is just crazy on its own. But the fact that it was Jeff Green doing it, I mean, that is the definition of, I wasn't familiar with your game. Now I chose the Air Jordan 17s over the 11s because I think the 17s are one of the most underrated Jordans of all time. And while those 11s are crazy, gold is better than silver. So the 17s take the spot here as they are one of the most surprising pairs in NBA kicks history. All right, guys, so before we get to the top two kicks, I really, really want to know what you think the sneaker of the year was. So go ahead. If you haven't already, drop a comment because once you see the second sneaker, I think you know what the first sneaker is going to be. So don't spoil it for yourself. Drop a comment right now. I want to know what your sneaker of the year is. Coming in as our runner up of the year is Kyrie Irving with the Anta Kai one. There was a lot of excitement and anticipation for Kyrie's first signature silhouette with Anta, which makes sense because his signature line with Nike was extremely popular. But it looks like Anta and Kyrie waited all year to debut their best colorway. Now we've seen Kyrie rock a moccasin inspired colorway before, but those were a custom, while this colorway seems to be an official one made in collaboration with Anta. The moccasin inspired design is truly unique and is something that only a select few can pull off and is unquestionably one of the best sneakers of the season, which is crazy because they're also the most recent sneaker on the list. But like mama always said, better late than never, the Anta Kyrie ones are the runner up for sneaker of the year. Also, I just love seeing this moccasin inspired design on the court. I mean, when Kyrie's out there crossing people up, doing his spin moves, jumping up, doing his lays, I mean, the way the material just floats in the air, it's perfect. It really is. Finally, at number one, we have Anthony Edwards with the Adidas AE1. Come on, guys. You had to see this coming. If I were to sit you down and ask you, what was the sneaker of the season? Not just colorway, but sneaker as a whole of the 2023-24 season. I think most of you guys would unquestionably say it was the AE ones. Throughout the season, Adidas and Anthony Edwards never let the hype for the AE one die. Adidas did their part with an incredible ad campaign that was both nostalgic and trendy and that did his part with his undeniable charisma and stellar play on the court, which included a highly entertaining deep playoff run. The season that Ant had, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we're gonna look back on 20 years from now and just say, man, it was epic. And you just kind of had to be living in the moment to really understand what it was like. But look, even without all the external factors that prop the AE ones to a level that we haven't seen a debut sneaker reach since maybe the curry ones adidas absolutely nailed ant's debut signature silhouette visually it might just be me but i think a lot of signature silhouettes these days look very similar to each other or at the very least lack to stand out from the rest of the pack but that cannot be said for the ae ones as they are by far the most unique sneaker in the league and one of the most unique sneakers that we've seen in the past 10 years as for a particular colorway to crown the best, I'm gonna go with the Futures. Ant debuted them during All-Star Weekend, and in my opinion, they were the best colorway Adidas had to offer and were good enough for me to actually go out to the mall and pick up a pair for myself. And let me tell you guys, when you get these bad boys in hand, they are even better in person. Truthfully, I've never been so sure of a thing in my life. The AE1 from Adidas is absolutely, unquestionably, undeniably, 1000% the best sneaker of the 2023-24 NBA season. So there you guys have it. Those were the 10 best sneakers of the season. If you enjoyed this episode or any episode of NBA Kicks all season long, please drop me a like. That helps me out a ton, guys. Like, I really do appreciate your support. As for the next video, since there's no more NBA Kicks, 
I have a review slash thought experiment of the AE1. I got a lot, a lot of interesting thoughts about that silhouette. So make sure you're locked into the channel, subscribe, and you don't miss that video. Again, I, I think it's such an interesting sneaker for the industry. So stay tuned for that. My name is Jaron Isbergen Avenue. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.